what I want to talk to you a little bit about is about mentors. Uh, and that goes back to Greek mythology. A, a man went off to war and he left his son. And uh, the man he left him was a mentor. And, it, and it's become to mean uh, over time, is getting advice, and Judy gave me some pretty good about opinions, but we're supposed to get advice from people that's got more experience than we have. For example, if I was around, I would love to take Bernie Chua, Holden Chain to lunch, and you should, if you have a chance to do it, and buy them the most expensive meal they want. Spend as much time with them as they want, and buy them a dessert. I know what you're thinking. Them guys, the money they got, they ought to be buying our lunch. No, see, that's, that's wrong. Because if you'll take some notes, what them guys give you advice and their experience, and you apply it, and that's the secret, you gotta apply it, it will be worth thousands of times what that meal costs. You gotta bark, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta bark. And, it was, and the association you do with, with people, it was, a, it was a guy, a writer, who wrote the thing, No Man is an Island, and he said, we're social animals, we do best when we're with other people, but we gotta be careful. It's been said to the, to the five or six people that we spend the most time with. Now, if we spend the most time with five or six winners, what are we likely to be? A winner. Same way. We spend most of our time with a loser. What are we going to be? Loser. Okay. But we can make that. We can. We can make. We can make that choice. And I know most of you are familiar with Napoleon Hill. That's the way he learned. I'll only give you a couple examples for the time. But the first one was Andrew Carnegie. Carnegie was 19 and 8, comes over here from Scotland, three, three years of grade school, 10 years old, working in a textile family for a dollar a week. And But he was mentored a little later when he was running telegrams by a guy the boys all called the Colonel. The Colonel had a private library and he let the boys come by and, buy their, and get their books and borrow them and he read them. He's self-educated, but he had mentors. So when Hill went to him, he taught him the mastermind principle. He'll never hear tell the mastermind principle. And Carnegie taught it to him. Carnegie was a millionaire at an early age because he was mentored by someone that told him about stock. He bought stock in a Pullman company. Like you guys are at a startup with OG, he got in on the ground floor, which is very, very important. And uh, later he, t he explained how he did the mastermind. He, got, he didn't know anything about the steel industry, but he selected the best chemists, the best lawyers, and the best accountants, kind of like an organization of OT. You put these people together, and he created a little company we know as U.S. Steel. It became the largest corporation in the world, made him the world's richest man with a third grade education. But he had the, he had the mastermind principle and he had mentors that helped, him, that helped him out and he learned from them. And you have the same opportunity. Now the reason I was telling you, if you've got a chance to go with Holden, Shane, or Bernie, or one of the diamonds, or the crown ambassadors, or what have you, that's been around a lot longer than you have, you can gain a lot of help from them. And when you do that, you not only help yourself, you help the ones above you, you help the ones below you. And that's what you owe in a mentorship. Once you've been mentored by someone, I remember a guy in the banking business told me, he said, he, he said, he told me, he said, you know, you do a little bit extra, he said, it probably don't matter. Nobody probably knows it. But he said, if you continue to do that throughout your career, one of these days that you're gonna be the success that the rest of the people are just dreaming about, and that and that's the that's the that's the value of it, and it's a choice that each each of us each of us make. And by the way, that guy's still a mentor today, and he was a bright guy. He formed a bank when he was 29 years old. He inspired me. I was a bank president for 20 years at a very young age when I should have been doing 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 something else. But he's still a mentor. But I, I remember them very words he said: "If you do a little extra, probably won't matter, but you continue to do it." Because see, and the good makes you mind. The thing is, you don't have to call the guy above you to say, well, I, I think about inviting these four friends over and explain this thing to them. You know, you can do it without permission. And, and it's not work because you're enjoying what you're doing. Uh, I mean, that's it. My wife remarked to my daughter, she didn't tell me, said, if your daddy quits work, he won't live 15 minutes. And I said, well, it's not work. And I said, I think I can make it a week. <laughs> uh, but but I, that's what I like about the OG people. Y'all enjoy what you're what you're doing. I'm gonna give you, I'm gonna give you one other. I'm gonna give you one more example of of, of going the extra mile that Hill told. This is a, is in Hill's writings. It seems that this boy was a bank teller in in, in near Detroit, and someone picks on the door. The bank was closed. A young boy by the name of Towns goes to the door, and he says, "Can I help you?" And he said, "Well, I'm going out of town. I need a cash check." And he said, well, we've closed the bank, but the law, law's not locked, I'll cash the check. 
he cashed the check before he left. He told the young man, he said, I probably got a better job for you if you'll come by my office. He gave him a card. And he hired, this guy hired uh, uh, Carol Downs, he gave him a job. On the first day at 5 o'clock, he told him, bell goes off, everybody leaves. Downs didn't leave. He went by his employer's office and said, sir, could I do anything for you for a lift? He said, son, the bell went off. Did you see them people going out of here? He said, yeah, they seem to be in a hurry, but I thought I'd check to see if you wanted anything. He said, well, matter of fact, I'm a drawing some here some plans, and they do the sharp pencil. He said, they summed down at the end of the hall. So he goes down to the end of the hall, and he sharpens him two pencils. Now, to make a long story short, he, tell, he made that as a habit. Six months he's promoted. And, and to finish the story off, the, the guy, he made a speech, and he said, sharpen them pencils on the extra mile, paying him up somewhere between 10 and $12 million. The reason being is this guy he went to work for was happened to be a guy by the name of Will Durant, and Will Durant had to be a man who started a little company we know as General Motors. And when he got that job, he got options and he got to move up in the in the thing, and that's going the extra mile. And it's the thing you can do without permission. I appreciate y'all's attention. I wish you the best.